Doctor, I've had multiple head injuries. I've been oh. I've been unconscious many times. I've had multiple concussions. I've been My. hitting the head with a baseball bat. Why? My head has gone through the windshield of a car. I've yes. been hit on my bicycle by a car, head into the windshield. Mm. Could this possibly yeah. trigger my vertigo? Hey, what's up? I'm Sonia. And I'm Mike. And welcome to We Need to Talk About This. Accompanying us today, we actually have an ENT consultant, Dr. Wu. Thanks for joining us here today. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. All right, so we are going to talk about vertigo mm -hmm. today. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are all different types of vertigo, right? Yes. Vertigo is number one, pretty common, uh, a symptom that we see in our practice. And vertigo is basically a symptom, right? So it's a sensation of movement that the patient or you may experience. And the different types basically comes with essentially, very simply, the duration in which the vertigo lasts. Oh, okay. Right? So there are different kinds of vertigo classified according to how long it lasts. That's one way of classifying it. And another way is to classify it whether it's central, coming from the brain, mm. or what we call peripheral. That means things that originate more from the ear and the, the balanced nerve itself. Do they come to an ENT first? when you have vertigo? Majority of patients would see our family physicians first. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a very, very severe or acute episode, then they often land up in the ER or the emergency room mm. because they're throwing up, they're so uncomfortable, they can't function. Can you just, in very simple terms, describe how that feeling might be when you're experiencing vertigo? Yes. Standing stationary, you would spin yourself round and round. And you're supposed to like yeah. walk in a straight and, line. And yeah. then you're supposed to try and walk in a straight right. line. At that moment when you stop spinning in that fixed spot, you find that your surrounding would be actually moving. Oh. And that sensation of movement is what we call vertigo. This happened a long time ago mm. yeah. and I was driving and all of a sudden, I felt like I was flopping all over the place and I yeah. immediately, and I was on the highway, it was kind of oh scary. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like I could not steer the car at all. Right. I couldn't believe I was even able to pull it over. It was severe. Was that not vertigo? When you have a sensation of your surroundings moving, that would be vertigo. The important thing is to realize that vertigo is a symptom. It doesn't end there. Mm. So um, we need to then figure out what's the cause of the vertigo. So what are some common reasons for vertigo in that case? Most common by far is this condition called uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, quite a mouthful. Yeah. We call it BPPV. I always reassure the patient that it is benign, mm. right? So it's not something that's going to kill you. Right. It's not something that's going to be so-called as opposed to a malignant condition. Mm. Paroxysmal meaning that it unfortunately does come back. And positional. That involves usually a slight tilt of the head, uh, lying down, getting up from the bed. Mm. Uh, that tends to trigger this. It increases in uh, prevalence as one ages. Mm. So in the more elderly, 60, 70 year olds, a lot of them wouldn't have experienced this condition. Yeah. So we have this uh, model behind us. Can yeah. you explain to us what's happening when you get vertigo? When we talk about BPBV, number one, we are just on that topic, involves structure number 13. So that's what we call the semicircular canals. And the semicircular canals allow us to sense the position of our head with respect to the three-dimensional realm in which we are in. Vertigo, on the other hand, is a larger umbrella of, of conditions. So it not only involves 13, it can involve 14 and all the way to the back where you see oh. the balanced nerve, what called the vestibular nerve, right? So focusing on BPBV, we would be treating patients where there is loosening of crystals, balanced crystals that have become dislodged. The good thing about it is that most of the time, this uh, loose crystals, you, you don't need surgery for it. But how long can the condition last? If it's the first time you've got it and it's mm. untreated, mm. Uh, majority of the time it's self-resolving within oh. maybe about two weeks to four weeks. Oh. Mm. For those that last beyond two weeks or a month, then when they come to the ENT, we do the Aplis manoeuvre, which is the repositioning uh, of the crystals uh, so that it will be moved to a deeper part or a different part of the inner ear where it doesn't kind of trigger that uh, vertigo again. So, Doctor, I've had multiple head injuries. I've been, oh. I've been unconscious many times. I've had multiple concussions. I've been My. hitting the head with a baseball bat. Why? 
My head has gone through the windshield of a car. I've yes. been hit on my bicycle by a car, head into the windshield. Mm -hmm. Could this possibly yeah. trigger my vertigo? Hit injury, hit trauma, that can potentially dislodge some of the crystals. Okay. And doesn't have to be immediate, but subsequently after a few months or years, the patient experienced vertigo. So it's okay. possible it could happen to me again? Possible. Maybe, but yes. you know, we want to we wanna actually see yeah. this maneuver. <laughs> yeah, how does this work? Do I go on my back or my... Yeah. So, so you hop on and remain, on. don't lie down yet. Okay. Remain seated. Start with the whole pipe, which is the maneuver we, we kind of use to diagnose the condition. Sounds good so to me. What do I do? So we get you to put your arms across your chest, just cross. So what we do is we tilt your head slightly back to your right. And on the count of three, I'm going to lower you flat. One, two, three, down. Quite quickly. And then what I'm looking for is your eyes to see if there's any rotation. So they, it turns like this. Oh! That's what we call nystagmus. That means that there are crystals that are dislodged. Dislodged, right? right? If it's positive and we are treating the right side, yeah. then what I will have to do is the repositioning uh, maneuver, okay. which is what we were talking about, the at least. So I begin on the affected side. Okay. And this bit is optional where we actually tap the back of the ear. Oh, yeah. So where the he's tapping is, yeah. is right it's behind the, the ear lobe area. You feel this bony structure, yes. this bony heart. And then we slowly turn the head towards the unaffected side. Do you feel uncomfortable with the tapping mic? No, it's like, not, is it okay? It's just that the head is very low, so oh. he, he feels a little bit of a rush. Okay. And Doing now, this, without yeah. moving your head, uh -huh. I need you to lie on your left. So turn your shoulders and your okay. hips to your left. Got it. That's good. Very good. This is interesting. The tapping is doing what? The tip tapping is meant to actually encourage, this... almost push the the crystals? Displays crystals into oh. the deepest part of the inner ear. Without moving your head again, mm -hmm. because I'm going to sit you up. Oh. So let them oh, hang I see. I see off mean. the side of the chair. Okay. And I'm going to help you to sit up on the count of three. Okay. One, two, three. <sighs> okay. Oh, I've dislodged your earphone. <laughs> earpiece. At least it's just a earpiece. You scared me there for a second. <laughs> I thought you dislodged something that was important. Yeah. Okay. And then, we get the patient to sit up. Now you can relax, okay? It's done. That's the maneuver. Okay. Importantly, after the maneuver, I usually advise my patients for the next couple of days to sleep slightly elevated mm. with two okay. pillows. And you can't just take them out? No, it's not so easy because you can see based on that model, it's really quite a deep structure. But do you have to do like a scan first or something to see mm. or no? Unfortunately, that structure is so small you can't visualize it on MRI or a CT scan. Honestly, I did not know that ENT consultants do this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, oh, yeah. No, no, no idea. You do. <laughs> yeah, good to know now, yes. though. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much, Dr. Oi, for coming welcome. on. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank Thanks you. for the, Thanks for the thank demonstration. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I wish I yes. could have been uh, more help, but you know, <laughs> no. I clearly was not a trusted nurse on this set today. <laughs> yeah, you would have been a great assistant. Yeah. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. We need to talk about this. We'll catch you next time. If you would like more health tips, be sure to catch our main show, Let's Talk About Health, on MeWatch and Channel 5.